What's going on, everyone? Welcome. This is the Warehouse Series, and this is Discord Friday. I did miss last week, guys. I, what I say is whenever I miss a week, go watch my videos. I have over 400 videos that I'm sure you guys haven't seen, uh, so definitely catch up whenever I miss a week. Now, usually it's because of eBay. I'm busy with eBay or busy doing my lawn care that I do now because I'm not in the warehouse anymore, or like I was waiting for lighting. I got new lights that came in, so that's one of the reasons why I was waiting. Guys, I'm going to jump right into this. You guys could do all this right now. If you're not a subscriber, please do that and join Discord. That link is in the description below you guys it's a great warehouse community so i wanted to first start off by saying how i've been getting messages like crazy uh from people at my work uh that didn't even know i left because they were up at the other warehouse or whatever because my bid went up at work so people started messaging me what the heck's going on i didn't even know you were leaving uh we got big warehouses that sometimes you don't even know what's going on until it happens i uh, and i also have people on discord messaging me how were you able to do it were you nervous all this stuff guys no i wasn't nervous all right i wasn't nervous because i planned this for almost two years and guys the one thing I want to talk about is is like being prepared. So be prepared for your retirement. Be prepared for your future, or even if you want to quit. If you're not happy where you are, then you should be prepared for that exit. And that might take two, three, four, five years before you actually leave that company. So this wasn't something that happened overnight with me. This is something that was a big decision for me. It was me sitting down with my wife, going over my finances with her, saying, okay, if we pay this off in the next two years, I'm able to do this with no problem. So guys, the first and foremost, most, I, you know, YOLO. You only live once type of mentality. I can't stand it. I hate it because it's the people that are going to be broke their whole life. Now, I'm guilty for everything that I talk about, guys. This isn't like I live, live some clean, free uh, financial, you know, that I was taught and I just felt, no, dude, I, I was in hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. Uh, and I still have my mortgage, you know, so I'm down to a mortgage right now, but I was hundreds of thousand dollars in debt with car notes and, uh, you know, car payments and, and uh, you know, uh, loans and credit card debt. Guys, I'm far from being the, a good person, but I did do what I could do to change my life around so I could leave the miserable job that I was at. So the you only live once attitude, guys, the life expectancy is 77.5 years. So you got a long life to live ahead of you. It's like a 90 some percent chance probably that you are going to live into your 70s. All right. Yeah. Unfortunately, crap happens. You know, we're not guaranteed life here on Earth. <laughs> so, you know, but living in the now, like you only live once type mentality is really going to freaking uh, just make you miserable your whole life. You got one life. Be happy. And I'm telling you right now, with no debts, you're going to be happy. Quit buying cars to impress people. Quit buy, I, I'm not, I don't want to get too far into this because i got a couple pictures I want to go over, but quit buying houses you can't afford. Just because they tell you, you know, when you're going to apply for a loan, just because they tell you you can afford a certain amount, does it really mean that? Only you and you alone knows your finances, all right? So just because they could tell you you could afford a car doesn't mean you need to go get it, all right? All my cars are like freaking five years or older. All right. I, I got a car that's 10 years and 15 years old. I don't care about new cars. All right. I don't care about that stuff. Houses, uh, the house that we bought now, the only reason why we were able to afford it is because we only had eight, nine months left on our old mortgage. So we had a lot of equity in that house that we sold to move here. Why did we move? Because we needed a bigger house and we wanted to move to a nicer area because the area that we were in was getting bad. And when my kids were still in eighth grade at the time, we wanted to move to a better school district. So that's why we moved. And we wanted a bigger house because I told you I got two boys with autism and I they're going to be with us probably for life, if not for a long time. So we wanted a house big enough to, you know, be give people space. So that's why we moved. Otherwise, we would have still been in our house at the other house and we would have been paid off. I guess vacation. All right. Make things simple. People go on these extravagant vacations and they put it on credit cards every single year, multiple times a year. Even if it's for a weekend thing, you guys go away and you spend tons of money. You guys go out to dinner like freaking three, four times a week. It is so much cheaper to now more than ever. It is so much cheaper to go grocery shopping and, and just cook up a healthy dinner for yourself. You're going to save so much money if you just cook your own food. Stop going out to dinner because you're putting that on a credit card as well. And, you know, the, when you're, you're yellowing it, you have no budget. If you do not have a budget, things are not going to work out. Every dollar that you bring into the household should be documented and it should, every dollar going out should be documented. That way you get a physical 
look at, wow, I brought in X amount of money and we kicked out X amount of money. We don't even have enough money to cover that. How are we affording everything? So this is when you really got to go into drastic decisions, especially if you're getting close to retirement or you're getting uh, close to a job that you want to quit because you're not unhappy. So guys, have a budget. Get the YOLO mentality out of your head. Quit material things. Buy, I could have put material things on here as well. Quit going out to eat all the time. Quit going on vacation just because you think that you deserve it. Guys, if you can't afford to go on vacation, don't go on vacation. If you can't afford to buy a big house, don't buy that house. Guys, do your research before you buy anything. Same with the cars. You guys lease cars. I don't agree with it. I hate leasing. I did it before. I got videos talking about why I think leasing is bad. It's a non-stop car payment. And everybody's excuse is, oh, well, you know, what about the, the uh, maintenance cost? Guys, my maintenance costs on my vehicles that are all paid off. All my cars are paid off. I have four of them. All right. I got a 2020, 21 Rogue. I don't even know what it is. I got a 2015 Honda CRV. I got a 2016 Honda uh, Civic. And I got my Hummer. It's a 2007 Hummer H3. They're all paid off. And I will wipe your ass off the planet with as much money I put into maintenance as as you put in the car payments every month, all right? I have no car payments. I have maintenance costs that I take care of those, and they will wipe you off the planet with as much money as you're putting in the car payments on your two cars, one car for the year. I guarantee it. My maintenance costs aren't even close to what you're paying in insurance and everything that you're doing. And, and half the time, you go to get something fixed on your uh, lease, and it's not even covered under warranty. Brakes, rotors, all that stuff, tires. That's it, it, The regular maintenance costs are still there for you guys. It's just if a uh, fluke happens that you're covered because you have that thing. So I'm not going over that anymore. Uh, let's get on to my next thing here. So what should you do? As soon as you start working, guys, you should be opening up a retirement account. As soon as you're available to open up this, and I say do up to the company match. Anything over the company match, you should be putting into a Roth IRA, in my opinion, guys, all my opinion. Pay that debt down. You should be down to a mortgage payment before you leave your job, and you should always have health care. All right, so that's the one thing that I lost a lot of was good health care. We went to lower health care, but I told you in my other video, be happy with uh, with less health care or be miserable with good health care. I chose to be happy with less health care. So these are things that you guys really need to take into consideration whenever you're either leaving or exiting a job or retiring. Uh, but remember, guys, there is a really good chance that you're going to be living in your 70s. So stop being miserable, uh, guys, because I'm telling you, money ruins marriages. Money ruins everything. Money takes people's lives. All right. And there's a lot of suicides out there that relate to money problems. All right. Money is not Debt, I should say, debt. having that debt is something that you guys need to take care of and immediately. And as soon as you pay off that one bill, you want to talk, guys, this is what get, got us started. And I want to also let you know, we've been doing this for like 12 years. All right. I, I did the Dave Ramsey thing. I made it and I have a step one finance YouTube channel out explaining my journey on this. It's still up. It's called step one finance. I don't post there anymore, but you guys can view my videos and I talk about my journey. I talk about the process and that, you know, we were doing great and then we go backwards doing good. Guys, you don't, it, just because you start something doesn't mean it's just going to go in one direction. All right. You can go backwards. You might take five steps backwards, uh, you know, but the important thing is that you just keep moving forward with your plan. But keep writing down that budget every month and get yourself a plan and just make sure that you are ready to exit your job. Uh, don't leave just because you hate the place. You got to leave and make sure that you're financially able to leave the place. All right, guys. So I know that was a lot. Remember, just go check out my stuff on finance. It's my journey. You know, guys, you don't always move forward with these journeys. All right. So you, you might be doing great for two years and then something happens where you might go backwards for a little bit. Then you got to rebuild your uh, little cushion, your know, nest egg. You know, hey, we just had to buy a furnace. Now I got to build that savings account back up again. So guys, you can it's a process. It is a process. It's something that you and if you're married, you and your spouse have to be on board together. It can't not be one and not the other. You have to be in it together. So let's get to some of this. So I posted this because we're on a couple uh, stacks of water right here. We got all these LaCroix that are slippery. So you got three options here. Either one, 
throw a finger wrap around here real light. Remember, you never want to wrap tight when you're not done with your order because all these gaps that we don't want to fill in are just going to condense everything. And we want to make sure we keep our cube. So if you're going to put wrap around here so these cases don't slide off, then do it. All right, but do it softly you could put a slip sheet down here so we don't get cases shifting around or you could just pull out shrink wrap uh on your wrap and just lay it on here you know just s it through here you know just you know just throw it on, on there so it doesn't you know just give some grip so your cases don't slide off but i just want to show this if you are going to lay around the croix these smooth cases i would definitely get ready for your cases on top to start sliding around all right guys this right here i saw this base i believe jeremy posted this uh once again it, I tell people this all the time, it, what's coming up in your warehouse? It all depends on what's coming up in your warehouse. So the only way I'm doing this is if I'm getting bigger cases. Now, if I go into the watermelon and I know I get lettuces, I get these big foxy lettuces that come up every time, I'm gonna put the lettuces right on top of here, it's gonna work out just fine. Or you could put a slip sheet down if you would like to do so. Me personally, if I had uh, what we got here, eight, two, four, six, eight uh, watermelon, I'm stacking four and four. All right, I'm going to stack four high right up on the front of my jack or even right here. And then I'm going to leave the wood exposed for cases. When I have open boxes that I do not like stacking on, I and I got smaller cases coming up that are going to fit in here and like make them uneven, then I'm going to just call them stack these. All right, I'm going to eight stack them. Like I said, four and four, I'm not layering them out like this. All right, guys, this next palette right here, I wanted to, uh, you know, first and foremost, you did great. All right. This is why it's so important to know your cube. I really hope you guys know your cube before you start your order. And you could do that, like I said, even if it does not say your cube in your headset, like how high it is. So right now, this is probably about a 45 cube palette. So in the beginning of my headset, if it says that I have a 45 cube palette, I'm gone. All right, there's a lot less thinking going on in the building my palette because I know the palette's not gonna be this high. And these are the orders that I make up time on. I'm not gonna sit here and mess around with cases and try to make this look pretty when I know I have have a 45 cube palette now if you do not have a 45 cube or i mean it does not say the cube in your headset and you got stickers or whatever this is when you start learning your warehouse all right i'm in one out let's just say this was one out and i have let's say just maybe i don't know 46 cases all right so i have 46 cases and they're all in one owl i know my case is in that owl they're all a little bit smaller they're not going to give me a full palette so i know i'm going to have about a half a palette so that's another way to distinguish the cube if it does not tell you the cube and those are the orders you move on so what i would correct in here is irrelevant if this was a full palette i'm going to tell you to do things differently in here but when we have a small palette like this your goal is to get that thing done as fast as you can as safely as you can so you can make up a lot of time on these all right guys this one right here jeremy posted over I, this is i don't think this is from his warehouse but someone posted this and people at his warehouse he works in a freezer warehouse struggle with long cases guys this should be part of your system if you're working in a warehouse where you get long cases all the time first of all in my opinion they should always be running the length of the pallet you run it the width you're leaving yourself a small section of pallet to deal with unless you know your cases and you know you have smaller cases coming up that line up with this so me personally i love the way this person did this running the length running the length we got up higher and we went inwards we're finishing off the top of our palette but i think this person did a great job you should always be documenting what works in your warehouse and if you have a bunch of long boxes that you know you're getting every order every order when i start in this out i'm getting at least three long boxes so i need to make sure that i build it the same way every single time so my long boxes I'm going to do just like this guys high corner low inside if we did not have a high corner low inside this would not work so this is okay we're even here we're locked out but you keep that high corner low inside these boxes are going to run like this with no problem if this little case was here and you put that down now we're running outwards we're going to get a pallet to fall over this person built a really really nice pallet all right guys this order right here uh actually this is the uh, that order i believe I think this is the yeah the order with the Lacroix that we said that we need to do something with. So I should so I, I'm sorry I should have put this right after it. I forgot I had this on here. So all what I want to say is we established our base and maybe we did do the wrap okay because I don't see no slip sheet or anything in here. So from here up I go right back to my crossing T. 
I got a bunch of little, uh, you know, odd shot uh, cases coming. So this big water right here would have been facing in. This right here would have been facing in, and I would have my skinny middle. See how we, we're going out? We're getting wide because we lost our. That's why I truly believe in that cross and T method, especially in dry goods. We establish a base. We're getting a mixture of cases. That is exactly when the cross and T method come in. So if we would have crossed and T from the base up this would have went a lot smoother. I promise you, if you're new and you don't know what my cross and T videos are, go watch part two, three, and four. If you go on Discord, they're over there on my top videos, all right? In the tab over on the side, you're gonna see Tim's tops videos or whatever. Uh, all three of those are over there. Part two, three, and four of the cross and T, you definitely wanna watch because it's gonna make this go a lot easier. All right, guys, the last picture I wanna show is this one right here. And, you know, I used to see all the time with Samuel and these guys and even Cole Wolf, like you could just post your picture with no name and I'm going to know exactly who it is. And that's where I'm at right now with this. Although I cannot pronounce your screen name, uh, you just, you post a lot of your work and you do a great job and all your palettes are starting to look like the same. So as soon as you post this picture, I know exactly who it is. Uh, you're doing a great job and you've come a long way. But guys, I just want to go over this real quick. Big cases on the, cor on the corners, all right? We got a small case in the middle. We got, that's fine. You know, these are nice solid flower sugars, you know, we could keep in. Uh, I, don't, I don't like this. I just wish we would have kept pointing stuff in, but this person established your system. Remember guys, just because I disagree with something doesn't mean it's the right way. It's just the way I know how to do things. I love that we kept our crush boxes on the inside. Guys, if you have crush boxes that you're selecting, you do not want them out here. You want them in the middle. Build a nice solid corner of sugar, and we just did a great job. You know, we threw a slip sheet in here, nice square pallets. We're using blue check, guys, I promise you, they're the best things that you could possibly use. If you could use blue check over plastic, I use them every single day of the week. Uh, but we're doing such a great job. Really pay attention to this. I mean, this is just perfectly done. You're doing great. And I'm telling you, and, and the person that does this, comment, when you first started, it wasn't this easy, right? But you kept doing the same thing and you kept establishing that system. I guarantee this person's making these pallets look that nice while making this set of money. They are crushing this, I guarantee it, because they're doing the same thing every time. They're building really well. I guarantee cases are not being moved a lot on here because they have a system. All right, guys, that's it for today. Please, if you have any questions or comments, leave it in the comment section below. Guys, subscribe to the channel. If you want to help the uh, channel by donating, it's really much appreciated. Join Discord. Give me a thumbs up. And guys, my eBay store, go check it out. Something different shop. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day.